Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Anjum Satar. I'm working with UK University last eight years now. I'm also teaching at University of Bradford and I'll try my best to meet your expectation. If you have any question, my background is ACCA and I'm teaching accounting, finance, business management subject. So uh, that's, you know, all about me. I'll try my best to meet your expectation. If you not get anything, please ask. And uh, we can arrange one-to-one -one if need to, and uh, we can go through things accordingly. Okay, so if you quickly, if you don't mind to introduce me yourself, please. What's your name, what, what you done before? Uh, are you doing, yes, practicing how long are you doing? If, if you, keeping in view of GDPR, Yes, if you don't want to share it, it's fine. Who's we'll going next? Uh, first, please. Yes. Quick, you know, introduction. We know each other and then we'll start our session. All right. Um, my name is Daniel. Um, I'm currently working for an account practice um, as um, an accountant. Um, I'm just doing this course just to uh, familiarize myself and also to open up... Uh, my small account practice um, in the future. So that's the main reason why um, I'm doing this course. Um, um, I've got, um, um, I've got uh, currently um, um, 80 um, um, part qualified um, and um, just doing this course, as I said, just to get some um, certification to open up my own practice. Yeah, that's all about me for now. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. All right, so um, my name is Sandra and um, I've been working in accounting field for the last um, probably 10 years. Um, I'm starting this course, well, I've started some time ago, uh, but I'm going forward with it um, because um, my career, some, some of the career changes are coming my way. So. Um, uh, for, I mean, I have university qualification, I'm part qualified with SEMA, and now I want to finish the qualification with IFA, and probably go later to ICAEW, um, so that I can go into the auditing. Excellent, brilliant, well done, thanks for sharing. Clean. Who's next, please? Yes, please. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah, can I go? Uh, yes, please. If you yeah, uh, my name is Jonas. I also have been working uh, for an accountancy practice uh, a little more than 10 years now. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm partly uh, ACCA qualified as well and looking to open from my own practice. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. Yes. Uh, yes, I think so. We have one more person, please. Okay. Uh, no worries. Uh, we can know each other more. Yes, you know, with the passage of time. So thanks for attending. Okay, let's please, we'll start. So each lesson will go through one learning outcome. So today we'll go through our learning outcome one. Uh, corporate reporting for strategic business advance, which we'll go through. Uh, as you know me, my name is Anjum. If you have any question, you can drop me email anjum at ukversity.co.uk and you are, we already in our WhatsApp group as well. You can drop the message in the group as well. I can call you separately if you want to. We can discuss if anything need to discuss, okay? So, LO1, understand the fundamental ethical and professional standard in relation to accounting standard and corporate reporting. That will be our learning outcome one and which we'll go through. Uh, the aim of this unit really is all about developing understanding about accounting standards and assessment, evaluation, international accounting standard board. You're already working in account, so you know most of the stuff already. So what we'll try to enhance and look according to learning outcome. And it's always good to be any activities. We'll start uh, always good to reflect from scale 1 to 10 where you at the moment and the end of activity, end of uh, our delivery where you will be and always good to be reflect. 
of course you know it's uh, accounting standards always carry on changing maybe we never end up with 10 but we can be quite close to 8 9 yeah somewhere we depends you know where we, what sort of practice we're doing and what sort of clients we have huh? sometime we're really focusing on standards huh? okay so today lesson key focus will be indicative contents which will we not really maybe every word but overall our discussion will cover all these key points we'll go through is1 international accounting standard one how we prepare and present financial statement two is about inventory three seven is about um, cash flow inflow outflow three operating activities financing investing and operating uh, IS8, accounting policies, procedures, estimates, errors, events, after events, property plant, equipment, impairment, and revenue, and IS38 and 37. So there are good few standards. I'll give you separate standards, you know, and the mind maps and things which we can enhance our understanding later on, which we'll go through. So our 1.1, which is explained. 1.1 is mean assessment criteria under learning outcome one. So when we'll do assignment, we can divide discussion accordingly. So it means our as these, you know, the lesson is in one way, other way is reflecting what we're supposed to do in your assignment. Eh? Okay, Th there are the main aim of to ensure the transparency, reliability, then we have a five professional code of ethics. Most of you maybe know already, but we can remember PPCIO. What is the PPCIO word stand for? Popular people chat in sorry, chat in office or offices. Yeah. So that's you know easy to remember. Popular people chat in office. So first first ethic is the professional what is P stand for? Professional behaviors. Second P is a professional, professional competencies and due care, sorry. And third is, what is C is confidentiality and I is integrity and O is objectivity. Yeah? So these, you know, please, these will carry on. These are the five professional code of ethics, which we need to be keep in mind when we'll deal with professional and we need to be, because we have a lot of you know, issues and wrong scandals. We have a recently const uh, construction company, Krillian uh, pension issues. Yes, 75 million shortfall. We have a lot of these, you know, so we need to be look around the financial statement should be provide true and fair. And we can look around the qualities of the financial statements. Yeah. Qualitative characteristics. About. So please, you can stop me if any particular question. So profession versus professionalism. Yes. As the profession, it can be your dual profession depends. Yes. So as a profession, the body of theories and the knowledge which is used to support the public interest. So most important, always working in the public interest, yes? Oh, yes, always accountant work in the public interest. Public interest, yes? Uh, yes, we can work individual interests, but we're supposed to be working in the public interest, yes? Because, you know, like money laundering, like all, you know, other issues we have, you know, in profession. That's why we have a standard to look around and more streamline the things and pro. So professionalism means taking action to support the public interest and the profession, a profession, uh, we can look around, you know, the certain essential and defining characteristics. So the professional person have the professional values, which we can follow those is quite crucial to look around these. Okay. So so professionalism, members are seen to be acting professionally, really having a professionalism. That's why we have every year we have to do SMIT CPDs. What does the CPD stand for? We all know, yes. Continuous professional development. Excellent. And how many hours we have to do approximate? Uh, depending. Uh, if you are a full-time member of staff, it's 35 hours. Depends upon your awarding bodies, yes. It can be, but we have to submit, you know, these, yes. And yes. always we're looking, the professional is always, you know, up-to-date knowledge really is all about. Huh? 
So because, you know, with the passage of time, especially in account, the things can be uh, outdated, yes? Mm -hmm. So we have to, especially finance act, especially legislations, uh, these are carry on. So as a professional person rules and all these things, which we need to look around, the accounting professions, okay. yes, on time. Hello, please you mute yourself. Yeah. Yes. Uh, sorry. Yes, if you want to speak, you can unmute uh, yourself, but I muted you. Okay, so please. Okay, so we can look around these approaches yes as a professional person we can follow them uh always regulatory framework we can follow the standards we have ifrs international financial reporting standards we have uh, local standards like saps and gaps yes which we can look around those and we as a professional person we up to date with the standard depends you know the clients and the nature of the clients you're dealing with this yes so especially public limited company are operation abroad and yes, those are the standard really is a crucial. We have an international standard board which setting the standard, yes, to enhance and harmonize the system. We have an international accounting standard committee. We can pass things to the committee and the committee can look around. Uh, international accounting standard board, conceptual framework set to the principle and the contents, international accounting standard believe. We can look around the preparation and presentation of financial statement need to be true and fair. That's true and fair is the key things. The individual uh, provide the financial information which you need to be is a useful and we can not influence that's you know that we can make the decision based on the financial information but not creative accounting yes creative accounting is can understand and our state thing okay so always we're looking the conceptual framework is looking investors and various others providing them information economic resources assets liabilities how we can and we should be uh, give them right going concern we should reflect as uh, a details as well as so we can reflect you know the company is not any issues it's not going to close like enron after a few months so nothing came in our attention which is significant which the company can't really operate within 12 months that can be sometime issues and we can look around the qualitative characteristic of our financial statement is the relevant capable information yes help you know to see it or the materiality material information that say any can influence uh yes sometime adjustment can be and we need to be faithful representation complete information neutral and free from errors yes sometime people do intentionally make errors for the sake of bad return or various others Yes, accounting documents, which we can enhancing the qualitative characteristic comparability, we should two years figures timely, we publish the information, we can verify what we are saying, we can understand those person have a normal accounting knowledge. Yeah? Okay, materiality is omitting, yes, misleading, it could be influenced the decision, so we want to make sure all the significant information should be true and fairly present in the financial statement of course we have to follow the company act 2006 uh, we registered in the company house their legislation stock exchange sec and we'll carry on looking you know security exchange commissions and uh, you already well aware of as a professional person always give you the professional judgment is the asset are treating liabilities are equity the basic criteria resource control by entity Yes, result from the past event and which will flow the future economics bent is uh, your asset. Liability is a legal obligation. Equity, of course, owners are residual interest within income, you know, increase the economics benefit, expenses reduce it. Uh, yes, contribution from owners and others, owner distribution of wealth, all this will be can uh, depend on nature of the business itself. Okay, intangible, tangible asset under IES. Uh, 30, 38, we can look around intangible. Intangible is mean goodwill uh, of the company, intangible asset. Yes, non, we can look around there. What will be? So goodwill is very, always when you make the goodwill, always use as, asset concept. Yes, asset is anything you own, anything you may reliably. Yes, so we can look around the goodwill, the buying and selling price of net asset 
we know accounting equation net sets is always equal to capital. Uh, if you're someone paying more than the net asset, the difference is they are paying for the goodwill. Yes. So internally, internally generated goodwill is very difficult to measure it because we can't measure reliably. Because that's you know until you if you can measure it reliably, you can treat as asset. Otherwise, you're not supposed to. Yes, prof. Your future economics benefit is quite you know the key in that concept which we need to look at. Goodwill, yes. Uh, purchase goodwill, yes. Of course, we can. We can look around these. You know the goodwill. Okay, so goodwill can be impairment of goodwill. So impairment. Impairment is a losses, so the goodwill can be go down, and we should reflect it true and fair by using all you know uh, and the professional judgment as well as the values uh, of the goodwill. So research and development. So research is not we can't really the research is treat as expense under ISA thirty eight, but the development is if we are like you develop the formulas and you know the formula is implement because they all been trial and tested COVID nineteen vaccine first suppose no we have the capability to make the actual medicine and the 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 development stage and what we can if we can measure it reliably we can say this is the idea is worth of how many millions yes technical feasibility we have we have an intention to complete the asset we have ability to sell we have asset will be generate future economics benefit ability to adequate we have a technical we have a machines we have a material we can do it all then if we can treat as asset otherwise we're not supposed to treat as I said, because now we can measure reliably because what expense we done it, we can see it. Automatization, impairment of the goodwill. Of course, we can look around. Goodwill never stay the same. We can look around impairment and the loss in from our, our income, which we can make adjustment. A couple of you learn about consolidated statements, which way we can make those adjustments. Huh? So impairment, of course, impairment is a losses. Those we need to be look around and we'll go through impairment. If we always, we need to be look around uh, different values in the next slide which we will look around so carrying amount the amount after the depreciation which is coming your carrying amount recoverable amount the amount which we can recover after selling the asset the value in use or the economics value whichever is lower we calculate you know and we can measure uh, the asset need to be impaired or not if the carrying value is greater than the recoverable amount asset is impaired yes so we need to be look around the carrying amount is greater. So carrying amount, let's say showing 100, but the value in use, uh, residual value is 80. So we can say now asset need to be impaired. Yeah? And the impairment is the loss and we can reduce the value of the asset accordingly. Okay, so accounting impairment, original cost, revalue, we can look around all what is happening, yes, and we can recognize based on economics are recoverable amount. Okay, IS2 is inventory. We know inventory have three types, uh, finished goods, raw material, and work in progress. We know inventory evaluation method, so LIFO is not anymore we are using. We are using FCO and First in, first out, uh, inventory of value need to be net realizable value. Yes, uh, which is mean net sales value. Uh, and we also, the purchase, which we can we'll say cost, whichever is a lower, whichever is a lower we should record. We not record on the higher value. So that's, you know, help, you know, to reflect true and fair information. Okay. Yes, so that's all we had a discussion. Okay, then we have a IES 37, contingent, contingent liabilities. When the probabilities of things, you know, like uh, we know the probability is more than 50%, like a Facebook uh, data, uh, data obligation, GDP are not fulfilled and they have been fine. So if we are clearly, we know the probabilities, we are going to lose it, then you should declare as a contingent liability, as a liability in the in your book of account. So we can measure reliably the legal obligation and you look, look, you know, how much will be, then you should show as otherwise, just on the single line, it's not, it's a contingent, maybe or may not be happen as a liability. But if, if it's the high probabilities, we can look around and we can use the IES 37 for this purposes to review, we'll do or we don't. Huh? Any question? 
Okay, then we have an event. Sometime we have end of the year adjustment. We have a heavy loss here. So within, if the books is the if the uh, financial statement is not being signed off, yes, within that not being authorized, then we can make adjustments. Huh? These are controllable events. Within that period, we can reflect it. We can make otherwise we can leave unto the next period. So we can look on these adjusting events and non-adjusting even under IES 10, International Accounting Standard 10. Yes. And then we have IES 18, which is about revenue. We can look around the revenue is mean the value of the sale, how we can measure it. Because let's say, you know, if you have a construction contract and the contract value, we're not going to include all the revenue until the proportion of the completion of the work you've done it. So you can recognize as a, as a revenue, otherwise it's not a revenue because you not perform the service until. So that's, you know, we can use it. IES 18, the guidance that will help, you know, to look around the, recognition criteria of uh, our financials in the financial statement. Then we have a IS 16, which is about property plant equipment. We can look around the depreciation method, straight line, diminishing and all. And we can look around the criteria of recognition and revaluation of asset according to IS 16, which is about property plant equipment. So that's come. So we can look around the cost model, our uh, revaluation. What cost me? What is the revaluation? The asset value, and we should recognize. And the depreciation should be charged to the financial statement and residual value. Uh, the value of this uh, at the end should be clearly reflect. If we have a disposal of asset, so depreciation need to be accordingly. So that's why is a non current asset registered is very important to reflect. And that's you know which we'll carry on preparing in the. Uh, in accounts. Okay, then we have uh, IS7. You already know under IS7, we have three types of activities operating, financing, investing, and uh, we prepare under the cash flow statement. You learn about direct, indirect methods in your maybe other areas. Yeah. So indirect, direct method, whichever method you use, we need to be reflect, you know, net flows under three activities, investing, financing, and yes. So direct, uh, indirect method, we can use it and we can prepare the financial statement. So net cash flow from operating next, which is normal business day in and out, is your current assets uh, changes during the year that can reflect our uh, financing activities, non-current asset values, reducing, increasing the difference. Financing is, is all about the non-current liabilities and um, your uh, equity figures changes. And then we can look around all operating, investing, financing. And we can prepare our statement and we can reflect, you know, those uh, accordingly. That's we need to. Okay. Then we have 1.2, ethical requirement reporting. Of course, we discuss about five professional code of ethics. We need to draw the safeguard. Safeguard is to reduce that. Okay. What less a question, you know, can you charge the contingent contingent fees? Like we can say, can we say to somebody, we'll save your tax of this, this, this tax and you should pay fees accordingly. Yes, let's say we are saving you 100,000 pounds on your tax. So we'll keep your 50,000 for our fees. Yes, 50, you will save 50, we'll get fees. Can we say to clients, what do you think? Anyone? No. No, yes. This is illegal to do, so we can't do like this. We can charge whatever fees, whatever the value of the service we provide accordingly, but we can't contingent our fees, you know, contain with the con some condition. Yes. Okay. Other, we have a lot of threads, uh, self-interest. Yes, if you have your investment and you're saying to client invest in this, that can be self-interest, your fees. If you're checking your own work, maybe you work as a, bookkeeper and now your accountant are becoming a details you're checking that that can be compromise your objectivity advocacy threads can be if you're giving advice to one client maybe you get, they are competing each other and both are your clients so you have to make sure you don't give the if you tell somebody no no i can't give you advice because i have other client as well it's mean you're going to compromise your confidentialities 
So we need to be look around familiarity. If we know each other's very close family relationship, then can be our somebody if you're getting getting the gift, you know. So you use the professional in law is nothing, but up to 50 pound gift is a lot of, you know, the professionally judgment is can be used maybe not influence because maybe you cannot giving the true and fair reliability credibility value and all you know we can look around these and always draw the safeguard uh, in your and thus you know is a quite crucial self-interest yes so recruitment financial interest clients and self-review checking your own work yes and other services you're offering that can create a problem sometime. It can be compromised. Advocacy accountant take the client part of act their advocate. Yes, will be fees of the client. A success outcome is can be contingent. Yes, as mentioned, that can't be and shouldn't be because we can compromise. Conflict of interest. You're doing two firms. Yes, maybe conflicting interest. We need to be protect safeguard. Yes, clearly declare family threats. Uh, yes, if your and the familiarity threats can be and ultimately intimidation, they will say, come on, you know, your jobs can be at risk if we declare the correct figures this time because we the uh, HMRC can ask, you know, we can't do it because they are intimidate you and we shouldn't be. Our relationship sometimes can be. That's why we, we say no to them. And that's, you know, which we'll carry on doing it. Okay, so today lesson was keenly focused on few ISs so please we have a link here which we can look around under and it's a Kaplan publisher if you do Google it, all the resources available on Moodle so we discuss about IES1 international accounting standard one prepare and presentation IES7 is about financial uh, cash flows IES2 is about uh, inventory IES38 which we said goodwill uh, we discuss IES uh, 10 events. We discuss about IES 16. And these were the major ISs, you know, which we need to be day in and out. We need to follow. Huh? So we need to be aware of if we especially dealing with the international client, big clients. Yes. So these, you know, the standards we need to be and we need to be make sure true and fair information. Okay. That's all from my end. Any question from anyone? No, thank you. Thanks for attending. And next lesson, we'll go through LO2. Yes, learning outcome too. And the things and the lesson recording will be available. So please, you know, it's quite good if you want to be fine. Technical article, yeah, on these standards, yes, is available through Google it if you want to ACCA or SEMA or whichever awarding body you want. Huh? So it's quite good to look around. Huh? Okay, thank you. And I'll speak to you next week then. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, Thank sorry, you. next lesson. Huh? Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Nice Thank to meet you. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.